بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره نعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله ولا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبد ورسوله We are, uh, alhamdulillah, that Allah has blessed us to reach to the end of Ramadan. And this is, a, if you think about it, it's not an easy, it's not, it's not to be taken uh, for granted, as we know that many people are either unable to observe this month or uh, or they didn't know about this month so as we whenever we came across these moments in our life we we want to take a pause and think about these moments so that's why today uh, uh, would like to share some of these uh, these highlights of the month that we can take lessons and give farewell to Ramadan, Ramadan the month of Ramadan, uh, as it deserved. So it's a mixed feeling, this type of moment. It's mixed with joy and sadness because something is leaving and joy because we did uh, uh, a very we had a, we accomplished uh, um, a month of fasting uh, through the pandemic and alhamdulillah we reached at the end of it, inshallah, may Allah accept from us. So some of the things that I'd like to uh, share with everyone is that Allah is, uh, in, in today's talk will be three elements. One is uh, reflecting about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our creator and how generous and merciful he is with us, the dealing between us and Allah. And the second point is what are we taking out of Ramadan? What's the next step? And lastly, how do we empower ourselves forward through the energy we gain through this month? So to begin with is, uh, is the the month and our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So people, those who don't know Islam deeply will always say that your religion has so, so many obligations, so many rituals, things you have to do. Obviously, is compare Islam to other uh, practice out there. It is not the uh, most complicated one and and not or most taxing one in terms of regulations and rituals but but even if we just go with the if the argument that hey you you guys have to fast and and stop think, things that even it's lawful for you during the year but how come now during ramadan you cannot eat you cannot drink you have to refrain from all other things and be disciplined so, but the flip side is, is, is just like they say, ha, and the, if, the, if, the, if a, a glass half filled water, if, is it half empty or half full? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he gave us, he created us and gave us and guided us. All this is one way he's giving us all, all this time until we reach this uh, adulthood and we have the perform this obligation and so out of the 12 months all we have to to do is fasting one month so it's one out of 12 and out, out of the 24 hours you also have to fast limited time from uh, dawn to sunset so this already shows you that whatever we do 
we can never pay back to Allah and we can never thank him enough for his generosity. And same for if we think about Salah, it's a big hassle for many people. They may think this is too much. Uh, why do I have to interrupt my business, work, whatever, my life to, to perform Salah? But out of 24 hours, you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, all he asks is spread out throughout the day, five times you remember him. You remember yourself. It's good for us. You remind yourself of why you're here. So uh, just like workers in the assembly line, they demand some break throughout the day. Same, Salah is our soul, break for our soul our reminder for why we're here. And same for uh, zakah, giving uh, charities, or uh, uh, that out of the, all the money that we didn't have it when we got into this life, and now we have it, had it, Allah gave us the, the wealth, and we, after a year, we still have some saved up the amount. We didn't consume all that wealth that he gave us throughout the year. And out of that wealth or out of that saving, uh, we all have, we just have to give uh, a small percentage, two and a half percent. So if you think, just reflect about all the things that we have, uh, Allah asks us, uh, at the end of the day, it's good for us. And and it's also very relaxed requirement, very not de demanded uh, obligations. So that's just uh, to begin this, this, this reflection about this month, which, which is, uh, is, is heavy, is one of the pillars in Islam. So if that is uh, what our dealing with Allah is, he's asking us to fast and in return, we have all this reward is definitely worth it. And then throughout this year, month, it is constantly, if we reflect on it, is a reminder for us, our relationship with time, relationship with food, relationship with people. So for example, relationship with food, uh, the Prophet Sallallahu said that, that if we can sustain ourselves with few bites, um, then that would be good. But if you really want to indulge, uh, the maximum is one third of food, one third of, of um, drink, and, and, uh, and the last third for your uh, room for breathing, and is literally for breathing. So. But if we observe ourselves, especially when we fast long time and we want to get everything, compensate the missing meals, uh, we end up sacrificing our own breathing room, like our own comfort by, by, uh, by uh, overusing the capacity of the food and the drinking ch chamber in our, in our body. So that just made me think that our life is supposed to be, we, there's time for enjoyment, time for reflection, time for our soul, time for our mind, time for our intellect, time for uh, helping other people. Not everything is about gaining, not everything about eating, but yet we forget and we, uh, we'll flip this coin, this purpose, that the purpose of life is not just indulge, is not to eat, but rather the, the balance of it is the remaining activities. F food is just uh, uh, one of the activities. So that, if you think about it through the big picture, we may be spending most of our life to earn that, the, the food, to earn the food while forgetting about a time to breathe, to relax. We may be spending all our life even skipping meal, like thing that we earn, we either too busy to eat it or we 
we uh, ruined our health because of just business and stress and then we couldn't eat uh, or we are just so overwhelmed to hold on to the wealth and save that we didn't spend it on food. And, and these are, as, as much you, you may think it, it's um, far-fetched, there are people like that and they, they, they live uh, very frugally for no reason. It's not like it's good for earth or health. No, just because they want to maximize their savings. So all these things, it, it's all can be seen that Ramadan is a moment for us to reflect. That is not just, uh, you don't overeat and you also don't do the opposite. Your reward won't be increased if you fast, say I wanna fast two more hours or I wanna fast continuously for two days. Uh, it won't increase our reward. In the contrary, it, it's, we made makes us not following the Prophet So these are simple things that uh, when when you break your fast, you you think about them. And in in today's time, people always or corporation or they always say about life, work life balance, and enjoy your time and you retire early and all that. This is exactly what Islam is telling us that your risk your provision it is it's guaranteed all you have to do is live and do the daily uh, worship pay your dues daily to allah and and have a balanced life and enjoy that provision comes every day um so so with all that what is our message as muslim we take it out, out outside Ramadan. Uh, what is the message that we take it to the rest of the, the community, the humanity? And in, in moment like this in, in, in like this in history where you see the conflict, the suffering, the social injustice around us, we want to reflect and think that our life is not just about living, it's not just about uh, it's not just about food. It's not just about celebrating rituals. There are things uh, beyond that. And that's what one of the Sahabi is narrated that uh, the leader of uh, Persia asked him, asked him, what, it, what are you here for? And what's your, uh, like, what, what is Islam about? So he, he said, he said, and mind you, like, this is a person that got enlightened because of this message. That's why we, we want to learn from him how he got that enlightenment so we can be also benefit from this message. So he said that Allah, because of Islam, because of this message, he enlightened us and made us uh, realize that rather than worshiping slaves like us, creations like us, we should worship a higher authority, the one, the creator, uh, someone worthy to be worshiped. And we are ibadat uh, al-ibad ila ibad rabb al-ibad, and uh, we are here and to and also to make us realize and help people also realize that uh, to get out of the injustice of <clears throat> different in just uh, regime and systems and deities and, and philosophies, whatever it is out there to the justice of Islam, that this way of life that uh, Allah wants his creature to, to follow. And from the narrowness that all we think is about our dunya, about the material life to the limitless uh, of the life after dunya. The hereafter. So in, in his this short answer, he summarizes basically everything, everything that we Muslim, we, this small group that now we're talking, uh, sharing this talk now uh, that we need to strive for. So, 
just want to reflect on the social justice part and related to Ramadan. So one of the, uh, you know, uh, regulations during Ramadan is uh, you cannot, um, besides fasting, you, you cannot uh, practice any any sexual uh, 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 with intimacy with your family in terms of like uh, uh, be be during the day. So one man he uh, violated that and went to the prophets and said and said, "Oh, I made a, a, a big mistakes. I had a really." Uh, 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 sex, like sexual uh, act with my wife during the day. So the prophet say, well, there's an atonement for it. There's a solution. You, you have to uh, fast uh, 60 days. Then he said, well, uh, obviously I cannot do that. Uh, then he said, uh, then the next step is your uh, next option is you, you give feed 60 poor people he said well I, i'm i'm poor uh, i cannot afford that then while in that discussion the some some uh like food items brought to the prophet sallam, so he he gave it to him and say take it and go use it and, uh, like give it to the feed the needy with that and he said well in, uh, there's no one in medina uh, more in more in need than me so the Prophet Sallallahu said, uh, granted him that the, the food item that came. So imagine this type of justice system compared to someone in today's life, someone uh, uh, have a job law abiding, but because of the, some reason their car registration expired, they get stopped they get booked and uh, removed from their family. They, uh, they have to, they don't have the money to pay. They lose their job. They, you know, all kinds of consequences. Imagine if this person showed up and the judge saying, yo, you, you cannot uh, pay, then you, you stay, uh, like your next option is this, like community service. Then he will say, well, I'm very weak. I have to feed my family. He said, okay, and then never mind." Uh, then even give him money saying, okay, go and use that money to relieve your, your, your suffering or your family obligations. So compare that to what the Prophet Sallallahu did. You can see that Islam is very humane uh, way of life. Uh, and with that, I want to move to the last portion. Uh, which is how this Dean started. During this month, there are moments that I myself, and I'm sure many that think, oh, today I'm, I missed the suhoor, or I ate something that made me thirsty. That you, you think you couldn't make it, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah made it easy for you and you finished that day. Uh, so, that's just us for one day or one month or something. It, there are difficulties that we face and uh, Allah made it easy. So imagine you reflect on the difficulties that the Ummah went through so they can convey this message of fasting to you. The suffering, the, the difficult, the like, they have to maybe migrate from their from hometown, homeland, because they just want to uh, some religious religious freedom. And and now think about the source, the messenger of this message. The Prophet He's sitting in a in a cave, mind his business, thinking about reflecting. Uh, and then a voice out of nowhere asking him to read. It is, it is a very frightening moment. And he is not someone who can read, he's, he's unlettered. So he had a valid excuse. And he said, uh, he replied to the voice, uh, I, I couldn't read, I'm an Abiqari. And yet with the repeated uh, uh, request from this voice, 
uh, he he re re recited and repeated uh, behind his voice, "Ekra uh, bismi Rabbika ladi khalaq." That read in the name of your Lord who created. And this is how this message started. And yet the Prophet ﷺ didn't stop at that. He 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 carried on, and at, uh, by the time. Uh, uh, the farewell pilgrimage, there are hundreds of thousands of Muslims. The Jabir ibn Abdullah, the, the Sahabi said, he went to that uh, pilgrims with the Prophet and he said, I will look to the right and I see, see the continuous crowd. I will look to the left, uh, to the right, to the left, to the front, to the back. So all, all Muslims mm -hmm. came, came to perform Hajj with the Prophet So this is, this is uh, when the Prophet died. Uh, I mean, be right before he passed away uh, in his farewell pilgrimage. So imagine that today we can still, even, even with pandemic, we are still fasting, alhamdulillah, we're still established in this pillar. We're still meeting on, on, on uh, Zoom and all that. This all because the Prophet Sallallahu with all the valid excuses he has, with all the emotional burden that he had, like his fear, he, he, he run home and said, cover me, cover me. And yet he didn't stop. So it is not, in this deen, we, we, you are not asked to be a superhuman being. You, you are not asked to not express your feeling in terms of fear, in terms of worries. Uh, you are not asked to say, you cannot reach out to your families, to your spouse and say, cover me, help me. And you are encouraged to go and seek advice, uh, seek knowledge. The Prophet ﷺ, Khadija suggested, hey, I have this knowledgeable relative that knows about uh, this, uh, this, this incident that you went through, let's, let's ask them. And the Prophet did that. So what I want, all of us to come out of this month is to reflect about what you went through, what the Sahabi, the, that statement that the Rabbi bin Amr an, the, the Sahabi who, the companion who, who, who said that we are here to uh, tell people and enlighten them about this message of taking uh, worship, Worshipping and living for a cause that is bigger than the being a slavery to other men and uh, humans. Uh, that we need to free people from the injustice to the justice and lead them to a justice life. And also let them aware, let the humanity aware that it's not about dunya. It's not just about dunya. It's this limited life we're having, the material life, or even just, just life itself. But it's about the bigger cause, uh, an eternal life after this. With all that, we, we come out from this month to, uh, to carry this message with the spirit and the strength that the Prophet ﷺ showed us. And finally, I'll close with this uh, hadith of Qudsi, uh, uh, a narration where Allah, uh, the Prophet ﷺ is telling us what Allah is, uh, said. So he, Allah said, Ana abdi bi, that I am according to what my servant think of me. So, you know, all this popular thing about secret and brain waves and and you can send to the universe this hadith qudsi is telling us what we need to do uh, through an authentic teaching that allah indeed is there out there listening to his, his servant some people may attribute that and call him universe some people mother nature but we Muslim know it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He answers us, he answered the, the, the animals, he answered those who are not worshiping him, him he answers those who are uh, uh, violating him and attributing falsehood to him. All of them, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is still giving them provision day and night. So he, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that I am, according to what you think of me. You think uh, I'll help you, I'll, uh, then 
then you get it. If you have, if you think you cannot fast, then yeah, you probably will give up and don't even fast for a few hours. So this is uh, to go to Jannah. It is is it difficult to go to paradise is difficult, but also at the same time it's straightforward. It, you follow the straight path and leads to Jannah. So same for this month, it, it could be difficult, but if you just follow the basics and just don't think too much and overanalyze, yeah, you're here at the end of it. And about a few hours, you'll be celebrating the eight. So may Allah help us to, to establish that balance in our life, establish the balance of when, how much we rely on our own self and how much we, rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the balance between the intake of food and drink and the room that we leave for ourselves to survive and live and thrive, to balance between the, the purpose that we are created for and the, and the purpose that people, the other slaves are telling us that we should follow or, or like the lifestyle that they dictate on us. With that, uh, I wish everybody uh, happy Eid. Uh, may Allah help us uh, have a, another gathering like this in Jannah. And uh, lastly, I'd like to ask everybody to make dua for the, the deceit of Muslim who are not with us anymore. Those who are literally were giving them farewell because they are uh, terminally ill or, or they... Uh, uh, they just uh, uh, passed away already. May Allah help us all uh, to utilize the remaining time in our life and use it wisely for his sake. I mean, thank you, everyone. <laughs>